Hello folks, um, we're going to be uh, looking at uh, the framing and mosaic feature in Sequence Generator Pro uh, and uh, it is a dawdle to use. It's, uh, it's a, a time saver and, uh, and it's, it's just very efficient. So let's get started. Share my screen and find our uh, kind of click on sequence generator pro I just recently installed sequence Gener generator pro on this computer this is a new laptop and uh, by default you have this target setting and uh, usually if you don't have a default profile setting then it automatically brings up the same camera and uh, other uh, gear selections that you used on the uh, previous night of imaging. So right now we have the attic camera connected which is a one-shot color camera so there is no filter wheel and uh, we're using a moonlight focuser and an Atlas Pro mount uh, and also we'll have the uh, Pegasus uh, observing uh, uh, programs uh, we used. This is the sensor that connects to the Pegasus Ultimate Power version 2 box uh, that's outside connected to the telescope and it brings in do, do number numbers on the dew point and on temperature and uh, the humidity and so it, it calculates the dew point and that's the part that we're most interested in to protect our gear but uh, with that being said uh, let's look at the framing and mosaic uh, panel by going up to tools coming down to framing and mosaic and uh, I want to go ahead and get rid of the sequencer and I can do that by going up here to this uh, icon and just click on it and uh, it comes and goes with a click and let's assume we want to shoot M51 so I'm going to type in M51 and if I select fetch then the software is going to go find a picture of M51 and load it now, if I've already taken a picture of M51 and I want to use that picture, then I can click Browse. And uh, first I have to make, a, make this my option. I click Browse and I go to the directory where the picture is located. Or if I just happen to know the RA and the deck address, then I have that option of entering that and click on fetch. Now what I'm going to do though is uh, I'm going to use just the object itself. <clears throat> I'm going to pick a field of view of say four degrees and um, if I'm using a wide field setup and this is a wide field then I'll use four or five degrees. If I'm using the Smith Cassegrain I might uh, go down to uh, two degrees or one degree but let's click on fetch it's found the RA in the deck and there's M51 now let's pick a better target let's try M31 I thought we'd have a little better picture so we're going to try Andromeda alrighty now the first thing that you do is you kind of hold your, you grab your mouse and you hold down a corner and you draw a box around, uh, well I drew two boxes and that's good to know because I'll come down here where there's camera tiles and I just want one box so I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to frame the target. Uh, the other settings 
are unimportant right now. So um, we're going to actually, we could have clicked on draw the triangle, and that's what I just did. Uh, we're going to always click keep composite tiles and entire field checked. It's by default. Don't change that. Uh, because I have the edit camera and I have the uh, uh, Vixen telescope, it's going to automatically bring in the right scale, pixel scale. Um, overlap, I'm going to have, it used, It sets at 20%. I think I must have changed that. 20% is a reasonable overlap. It is the default overlap. And then the attic camera has a pixel sensor size of 3362 by 2504. So all of that is loaded from my profile. And uh, I, I'm really not going to change the rotate selection. I leave that alone. I do not have a rotator. So I'm going to put create a sequence. Next. I'm going to give it a more formal name now. I'm just going to, this is going to go in the heading uh, in Sequencer, and I'm going to type in A-N-D-R-O-M-E-D-A -E for Andromeda. I'm going to replace the target with hat. There is no target right now other than target, and we're going to replace that. I want to uh, select after I found the target. I want to slew and then center on location. Now this is assuming that we've got our gear all, con arc all connected. Since I don't have a rotator, uncheck that. If you have a rotator, you'll keep it checked. And that's all we're doing. So we're going to click OK. We're going to get this message, and you'll unless you select Don't Show Again, that we're going to create this target, and we're going to say Yeah, created. And now we have replaced what was called target by M31. And uh, we're ready to, uh, when we're ready to uh, go to the target, we're going to click on the wheel. We're going to, and if the gear is connected, this won't be grayed out. We're going to click on slew now. And then center now, once it's gone to the target, we're going to center. And you will see that Andromeda has been uh, framed in the center through their plate solving software of your selection, which is either Pinpoint, ASAP, Plate Solve 2, or Astronomy Net, whatever you choose to use. And I'll probably be using Plate Solve 2 and or Pinpoint. I go back and forth between the two. They just seem to be the most reliable for me. All right, now let's assume that we want to do a mosaic. Well, it doesn't always start out that way. Let's assume that we have a camera whose scale is just too large for Andromeda. And um, let's go up and replace this one. Let's go to File. Let's create a new sequence with a profile. And we don't want to save this. We'll just click on No. And uh, let's go down and let's pick the 1600 ASI and the 8 inch SET on, the, on this mount. So let's pick that. Now all of this changes. We have the ASI ZWO camera. ZWO filter wheel is now active. The focuser and of course we're down here needing to bring on the Pegasus. Um, weather sensor. So we're good to go here. Let's go now to the tools, framing and mosaic, and we're going to type in M5, M31. Now you do not type in anything other than a name. You don't need, you can type in Andromeda and it'll find it. But uh, don't type in 31 space Andromeda, uh, just M31. And uh, we're going to fetch. It's found it. So let's now close the sequencer. And we're going to draw a, a rectangle. And uh oh, uh, the field of view for this 
we have a scale of 0.39, whereas we had a scale of 3.36 on the added camera. And we have pixel dimensions that are about 30% greater than that of the added camera. So um, what we're going to do in order to encompass is we're going to start adding tiles. So I'm going to add them uh, in width and in height. We're going to probably need right there. So it's going to take 36 pictures in order to uh, cover this entire span of the sky that would uh, cover the entire galaxy. Now, uh, the overlap is something you can vary, but 20% allows the software to match up these uh, two pictures, actually these four pictures, uh, when you give it enough overlap to put one star in top of the other. But if you wanted to uh, lower it, you can click on it and you can see how lowering the overlap uh, has an effect of uh, our narrowing the overlap. If you have a part of the sky with few stars, uh, you may want to increase the overlap, but 20% is the default. Now, uh, we're going to um, create a sequence. We got the tiles. Everything else is right. We're going to create, create a sequence. Uh, we're going to replace the sequence that are in the target. We're not going to use the rotator. And we're going to slew and center once we've started up. This is where you can now go ahead and type in Andromeda. Uh, hit the caps key. And, and if you want, you can type in the date, which uh, can help you. And if you have run uh, more than one system, you might want to go ahead and type in the uh, uh, telescope that you're using and some nights I'm imaging a target the same target with two telescopes so I do want to differentiate so that later when I'm post-processing I don't mix up the supporting files with the uh, with the uh, wrong telescope uh, but at any rate we're ready to create this mosaic it worked and now what we're going to have is uh, event events inside of 36 different uh, imaging sessions. When one is done, it will go to the next. When we finish taking this first one, then it will slew to the next part of the sky and it will include that 20% overlap and it'll start taking the second uh, sequence and it will move down through all of these sequences taking each event in each sequence until the mosaic is complete well obviously there's not a, a good chance you'll have enough light enough dark in the sky uh, you will not have it in the summertime but of course Andromeda is not going to be available uh, really until later uh, at, at best in the fall but um, you're going to probably find yourself imaging this over several nights in order to, uh, to to get your mosaic completed but there's more magic involved let's say that this is we're, we're satisfied with this so we're going to go to the first sequence and we're going to set one of these up and we're going to take a all light frames so we're going to do L R G B and some HA because there's some nice HA in uh, Andromeda 
I'm going to type in the letter B. This, which, this will go in the name of each file. So you do want to be able to recognize the file by its color. So And let's suppose we're going to do a 30 second exposure here, a 45 second exposure here, and I want to run the gain up real high on this too. 45 exposure here, 45, and a 240. We're going to do 60, 40, 40, 40, 10. All right, this will be our this will be our sequence number one. I'm also going to click on this wheel right here and go down to event settings and I'm going to type in the gain. It's going to be 200. No, it's going to be 139. Now, uh, here's a point of interest. I've loaded both the ASCOM driver for my ZWO cameras and uh, so I've got that loaded but I also have the native ZWO driver uh, installed. If I also want to uh, uh, enter the, the offset then I'll need to run the ZWO dri a native driver. So if I click on the ZWO native driver and I go to event settings, then this is not grayed out. And I would say put in 21 for the offset. So in this case, let's suppose we're going to use this driver where I do have the default driver as the ASI driver. I, I don't know why I do, but I just do. All right, we're good here. And then uh, we're going to go to the next one, Event Settings. Now I'm just changing the events in this one sequence. I'm going to type in 139, 21, and I'm going to go down to this event, and this is the green event, 139, 21, and I'm going to go to the blue event, 129, I'm sorry, 139, 21. And then um, you got to bring this up a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going down to the HA event. And we're going to do 200 here and 50. All right. Now, what we've done is we've entered uh, a label for the file. This is going to bring up the luminance filter. We set the exposure time to 30 seconds. Uh, they have a drawdown where there are some default settings from 1 second, 5, 10, 30, 1 minute, 2, 5. But you can enter in any amount of seconds you want. We're going to do 60 of these looms. Then it's going to rotate to the red filter. It'll automatically bring the red filter up. Um, and then it'll cycle through each one of these filters, taking 60, 40, 40, 40, 10. And so it will take two hours and 40 minutes to do just this one uh, set of events in this sequence. So this, uh, this sequence takes two hours and 40 minutes. Now, we have a problem. If I click on this next sequence, i got to enter all that data again 36 times. Not really. You can go up to the one that you've got ready to go, and you can right-click on it, and you can. here's one of your options. You can copy target settings and events. Make sure you pick and events to click on this, and you have all the other events in this uh, imaging session that you need to select. So you can click on this, it selects all of them, and when you're done, then if you go down to this event, 
it's already populated. If you go down to this event, it's populated. And if you click on, for example, HA, and you look at the event settings, it's 250, which is what we chose for HA. And if you look at the red, it should be 139 and 21. And it is. Now, let's suppose that going out uh, through the night, you know you're going to have, uh, you got two hours and 40 minutes. Let's suppose that you know you're going to have six hours of imaging time. Um, well, it's going to be close because when you consider dithering and focusing between filter changes and focusing time between temperature drops, uh, it's going to take probably at least three hours to do this sequence, if not a little longer. But let's say you have six hours of imaging time, so you're pretty sure you're going to be able to get two of these done. Well, then uncheck the rest, and it'll stop after two. And come over here where you have, uh, uh, um, right here, go, go to the, this one and right click on it, and go back down to target settings. Uh, I'm sorry, back up. Go to, uh, I'm sorry. Go down here to, this will be your second uh, sequence, and HA will be your last event. Go here, and Event Settings, and select to park the telescope when it's done. So now, what's going to happen tonight, assuming you're going to be able to get six or more hours in, you're going to image these first two uh, uh, sequences and all the events in these sequences and when it's finished with this sequence and the last HA image it will go ahead and park your telescope in the session and disconnect your uh, gear. It'll also disconnect PHD2 and um, so you're you're done for the that night and then the next night you got to uncheck the rest of these, by the way, or as soon as it's done, well, it would park the scope because it's been instructed to do so. But uh, I would make a note that I would uncheck them all, and I would only check the ones that you plan to do during that night. So, as you can see, it's going to take a while to do a 36-panel mosaic, and it's going to be a tremendously large file. But can you imagine the detail in that file? Uh, you could put that on a billboard uh, with those pixel sizes. So, at any rate, uh, that should do it. Uh, the only thing, other thing you might do is connect browse and uh, go find a directory that you're going to store these files in. And as far as I'm concerned, it's time to have an external SD drive, SD drive that uh, is at least one terabyte. That you have attached to your laptops so there's plenty of room to uh, to store your images on okay let me see if there's anything else I can think of the tools framing and mosaic wizard they're just genius plans you can also get to them by on Windows clicking on control and the M key for a mosaic all right folks with that being said um, I hope you have a great rest of the uh, day, and uh, we'll catch you as we look at another feature of Sequence Generator Pro in our next video.